Generation 3 is where I got my start with Pokemon. Every year, I do what I call a pilgrimage to Hoenn, going back to my favorite region for a playthrough of one of the original games or the remakes. Along with that, I've got a bunch of fan-made Hoenn merch, including the awesome Winds of Hoenn book, and I love playing competitive Generation 3 battling formats. But as with anything you love this much, you're bound to find flaws in it. Two recent events opened my eyes to Hoenn's biggest flaw, making the Tyranitar competitive history video, and trying to build a hail team for a Generation 3 VGC format. Generation 3 is famous for making weather its defining feature. Cast form is the avatar of that focus, and the battle between Team Aqua and Team Magma centers on awakening the region's two box art legendary Pokémon to alter the weather to their liking. This part was done seamlessly. It's simple, wet versus dry. Groudon's the only Pokémon in Gen 3 that can summon the sun through its drought ability, while Kyogre's the only Pokémon in this generation that can summon the rain through its drizzle ability. No other Pokémon would have access to these abilities until Generation 5, when Ninetales got Drought and Politoed got Drizzle, both as hidden abilities. But Sun and Rain weren't the only weathers introduced in Generation 3. There was also Hail, and more obviously, Sand. The way these two weathers were handled is incredibly confusing, and fixing these issues is what this video hopes to do. So, what's wrong with them? Firstly, the way they handled Sand doesn't make any sense. Like Groudon getting Mount Chimney and Kyogre getting the Deep Sea Caverns, Sand got its own central location in the region, the Desert Ruins in Route 111, where sandstorms are the permanent weather condition. Despite that, this area has no equivalent to the other box art legends. Instead, the Sandstorm summoning ability Sandstream was given to Tyranitar, a non-legendary Pokémon that isn't from Hoenn, and can't even be obtained in any of the Hoenn games. Its pre-evolved form Larvitar was exclusive to the Sevi Islands in the Kanto remakes, games that wouldn't come out until a year after Ruby and Sapphire. Given that it's the only Pokémon that can summon sandstorms, it would have made perfect sense for Tyranitar's pre-evolved forms to be all over Route 111. Their handling of Sandstorm gets weirder when you look at Cast Form. Cast Form changes its form depending on the weather, being a fire type in sun, a water type in rain, and an ice type in hail. Confusingly, it doesn't have a rock type variation that it changes into during a sandstorm, despite being able to learn the move Sandstorm. This, despite its signature move Weather Ball, which only Cast Form could learn in Generation 3, turning into a rock move in sand in the same way it changes types in other weathers. It's not like this makes that big of an impact during playthroughs or in competitive battling, since cast form isn't powerful, nor does it evolve into something that is. But it served to show the weather effects in a big way, and was your reward for stopping the evil team at the Weather Institute on the way to Fortree City. There was clearly some stock put into this Pokémon in these games, yet it completely ignores one of the weather conditions while having forms for the other three. There's a few ways to tackle fixing sand in Generation 3. Most obviously, give Cast Form a sand form. It's simple, and players are far more likely to encounter a sandstorm in these games than they are any other weather condition, since Route 111 has some interesting things about it to explore. This artwork by the Subjectively 5 YouTube channel looks like something that could have been in the original games, and should have been. My next idea might be controversial, at least to competitive Gen 3 players, and that's to take Sandstream away from Tyranitar. While we're at it, let's also take Cloud9 away from Golduck. Abilities that summon or directly impact weather should have been exclusive to legendary Pokémon upon their introduction. Groudon summons the sun, Kyogre summons the rain, and Rayquaza's airlock nullifies the effects of both. So if not Tyranitar, who should be the Pokémon to showcase Sand? Generation 3 does have a legendary rock-type Pokémon in Regirock, and you do find Regirock in the Desert Cavern in the post-game. But I'd want this Pokémon to be capturable before you face the Elite Four, plus I'd like to keep the Reggie puzzle intact. Route 111 appears so early in the games that encountering a legendary Pokémon at this point would probably leave an indelible memory with young players. 
To avoid turning Flannery's battle into a joke by handing the player an incredibly strong rock or ground Pokémon right before her fire-type gym, the desert cavern containing this Pokémon should only resurface after the player defeats both Flannery and Maxi. We could have a fierce sandstorm blow through Lava Ridge Town the moment you exit the gym, and Flannery telling you that you should go into the desert to investigate. The only Rock-type option here is Agron, as it's the only Hoenn Rock-type that isn't either a Fossil, already a Legendary, or Relicanth, who's exclusive to the underwater sections of the game. But there are two other Pokémon that could just as easily fill this role. Flygon and Claydol are both awesome Pokémon, and you can find their pre-evolved forms in the desert, as opposed to Aeron and Laron for Agron, who don't appear here. All three of these Pokémon would be fantastic options for Hoenn's Desert Legendary. Flygon and Agron could fill the Titan role with minimal tweaks to their designs and stats. Claydol would be a lore-focused choice, as it doesn't give off the Juggernaut vibes that the other Weather Legends do, even though its Pokédex entries make it sound incredibly interesting. I'm going with Claydol in this spot. Its dex entries read of it being a clay figurine come to life thousands of years ago. We could alter this by having it be a doll that got planted in the ground in ancient times to try to summon a sandstorm for some reason, with the power of the earth giving it life. Potentially, it could rewrite the origins of Team Aqua and Team Magma, now beginning as cults that worshipped Kyogre and Groudon since the earliest days of recorded history with an unaffiliated group fleeing into the desert to escape their insanity, hoping that the Sandstorms would hide them. This allows the Sandstorms to tie into the Team Aqua and Team Magma storylines without getting in the way of it. It shows just how long these two groups have been warring, and how it's affected the world around them even before they tap into the power of Kyogre and Groudon. The only problem with this is that it gives Hoenn two weather legendaries that are both ground types. And since we're already here, might as well talk about my issues with Groudon. While Kyogre benefits from rain in a big way, Groudon doesn't benefit from sun in equal measure. It's not a fire type, nor is it a special attacker, so it's not going to be benefiting from the boost that sun gives fire moves anywhere near as much as Kyogre benefits from the boost that rain gives water moves and the defensive benefit it gains from sun weakening water isn't as important as it sounds. Kyogre can just switch from using water moves to using ice moves without much issue, and still hit Groudon very hard. Again, Groudon lacks an equivalent counterplay. This is on top of grass types having the ability Chlorophyll, which is activated by the sun, letting them outspeed Groudon and nail it with a super effective, no charge needed, base 120 power solar beam. Now yes, there was only one meaningful grass type that got chlorophyll in generation 3, Exeggutor, but it's still really weird how Groudon's own ability shoots it in the foot. Their reasoning for Groudon being a ground type is solid. Pyroclastic flow from lava hardens and creates new land, but it would have made more sense to have Groudon be a fire and rock type. Yes, it would have made it more weak to Kyogre, but you aren't trying to beat Kyogre with Groudon anyways. This image is the matchup 90% of the time, even when Groudon has Sun Up. I think giving Groudon the Fire Rock typing would have been awesome. Groudon is one of my favorite designs in the whole series, and adding a bit more of a fiery look to its base design could have been so cool. Of course, now it can't be Groudon since it's no longer a ground type, so maybe I will outsource the ideas to you, the viewer. Comment down below what a Fire Rock version of Groudon should be called. While editing this, I came up with a different way to balance the Kyogre-Groudon matchup, and that's by making Kyogre a dual-type water-electric type, since it already summons thunderstorms and has thunder as one of its signature moves. This would allow regular Groudon to hit it for super effective damage with Stab Earthquakes. This would also benefit Kyogre, since Electric-type attacks wouldn't be super effective against it anymore. Now we get to Hail, the only weather condition introduced in Generation 3 that didn't have a Pokémon with an ability that summoned it, or an area where it was the default weather condition. 
We wouldn't get either of those until the Obama Snow line and Northern Sinnoh in Generation 4. Yet, cast form still has an ice form for some reason. But it gets worse. Unlike the other three weathers, there isn't even an ability that interacts with hail in Generation 3. And here's what stopped me from committing to a hail team despite those other limitations. Hail didn't make Blizzard more accurate in this generation. The change to making Blizzard never miss in hail, like Thunder never misses in rain, didn't get introduced until Generation 4, even though that was the case with Rain Thunder in Gen 3. I don't get why they added hail at all. They did nothing with it. It was purely a cast form gimmick upon its introduction. Even natural ice types don't benefit from hail, aside from not taking chip damage from it, which is such a non-factor, because why would anyone ever set hail as the weather condition to begin with? The only way to set hail in Generation 3 was to use a move of the same name, which only lasted for 5 turns, as opposed to weather summoned by abilities, which was permanent unless changed by another weather summoning ability. This is the point in the video where I have to get creative in my approach, because there isn't a natural jumping off point for fixing hail like there was for altering sand. Including Regice, every ice type in Gen 3 was tied to a water area. Regice is tied to some random island between Petalburg and Duford, and Sfeel and Snowrunt can only be found in Shoal Cave, north of Moss Deep City. You can only find Snowrunt here during low tide, at which point you can only encounter it in a single, small, otherwise meaningless area as the rare encounter. Again, why did they add a weather condition specifically for ice types when they seem to actively not want you to find any aside from the Sfeel line which was also part water? Snowrun's area doesn't even make any sense here. Why would there be a single ice cavern in an otherwise completely tropical region? Now here's how we fix this. By leaving Hail out of Ruby and Sapphire entirely and saving it for Emerald. Hail was a half-baked idea they seemingly added at the last minute without a clue of what they really wanted to do with it. You know, that description reminds me of a certain Hoenn Pokemon, allegedly the last one added to the original games, only able to be encountered in a single area at an extremely low rate no less. What if we turned Chimeco into an ice ghost legendary specter that was housed in a new area exclusive to Emerald's postgame? Along with the Battle Frontier, Emerald could introduce an island to the north of Hoenn's main setting that is entirely a tundra, serving as a mix of the Sevi Islands from the Kanto remakes and Mount Silver from the Gen 2 games. After the events of the main story, the player will gain access to this new island through getting called to Slayport City and being asked to investigate a disturbance there. The issue? People's Pokémon have begun fleeing into the wild tundra to follow an eerie sound that has them captivated, and the strong blizzards now overtaking the Outlands are too vicious to be faced by normal trainers. Only the new champion seems to have the strength to face it, and the bond with their Pokémon to ward off the Call of the Wild. This would be Chimeco's response to what happened between Team Aqua and Team Magma. Seeing the forces of nature being abused by humans, it's trying to save captured Pokémon from their trainers. Only by battling the champion and seeing your bond with your Pokémon does it learn that not all trainers are bad. That's the basics of it, but there's a lot this could offer depending on how big you want this island to be. Before leaving, the player could be gifted a Camerupt from Flannery to help you make it through the tundra and you'd be riding it through this new area on your way to Chimeco's Ice Sanctuary. Also before leaving, your rival could challenge you to a battle where they finally use fully evolved Pokémon, something they wouldn't actually do until the post-game of the remakes. This new ice-focused area also gives us the space to add Pokémon that weren't capturable in Hoenn. Completing the national decks in Gen 3 was a pay-to-win scheme in the most obvious way, and Tamashi Hiroka's made a great video on why. So here's our chance to kinda mitigate that, and also make some harder to obtain Pokémon much easier. I'm thinking a mix of Ice types, Fire types, Ghost types, and Steel types. This should be the area that Snowrun and Glalie are native to, 
not some random one-off tropical cave. In the lake of this new location, the player could find high-level Lapras, Kingler, and Cloyster, while Walrains and Dugongs could be found by surfing around the port where you arrive. Gengar and Mistrevis could be found in the forested areas, emblematic of lost souls who didn't make it home. Depending on how dark and sad you want to make this, you could make these ghosts encounterable right outside the village area, people who were so close to making it back. On a brighter note, steel types and fire types could be found in caves and the areas right outside whatever towns would be on the island. Having been brought to the island years ago by humans to make life easier there, small populations eventually sprouted up near civilization over time. This island would be like nothing else in Hoenn, while still completely fitting into the region's identity. What do you think of these ideas, and what would you change about your favorite region if you could? If you enjoyed this video, consider watching more videos from me, two of which are on screen now. Hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel are also good ideas, and you can find me elsewhere on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching!